grace to you and peace. God who was, who is, and who is to come. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of all the monarchs of the earth, it is in his name that we gather for worship and welcome you to Chester Presbyterian Church. We're glad you're here in the sanctuary. We're glad that you are here at home as we gather to worship. As always, a few things to share with you uh, for today and as we go forth, but uh, I want to begin with Super Bowl, and not the one that we're talking about later, but the Super Bowl of Karen. Many of you have made soup. Thank you very much. Many of you have ordered soup, and for those who haven't, there's some left. Uh, check on the way out to get your soup if you're taking it home with you uh, or if you're coming in uh, from, from uh, home to pick up the drive through They'll be looking for you. Get a little extra. And on your way to the soup, the membership committee has made some cookies for everyone. So make sure you get your cookies on the way out of worship. The Stewardship Committee's heart notes continue all this month. You'll see the red hearts in your pews. Uh, share a word of what you love about Chester Presbyterian Church uh, and then pass that into the uh, offering plate on the way out or it can go directly into Rusty Hopkins box where a whole bunch of them got stacked earlier. Those are the serious things I wanted to lift up. There's one more really, really serious thing that I wanted to share with y'all and, and that's to share with you that our, we have a special flower dedication today and, and what some folks, a lot of folks know is that well, there's frankly a few couples that met here at church. It's a good place to come for worship. Uh, and one of those are the Fletchers, Bruce and Liz. And today's flower dedication is from Bruce. And the reason I am doing this is because yesterday, Bruce, getting his house all ready for Liz for Valentine's Day, fell off a ladder. And he's in the hospital. He's okay. They did surgery on his ankle yesterday, but he'll be home in a couple of days. But he couldn't be here. So for, for Bruce and Liz at home, Judy's focusing on the flowers as I share Bruce's dedication with all of us. The flowers in the sanctuary are given to the glory of God by Bruce Fletcher to commemorate the 24th anniversary of his first date with Elizabeth Wiggum, soon to become Elizabeth Fletcher. Why is this significant? Because these two first met in this very church. First date was actually on Friday the 13th, but Bruce prefers to remember it as Valentine's Day. Isn't that sweet? Bruce, we hope you're getting better. Thank you, Liz, for being there with him. And bless you both for these flowers. They'll be here for you in your hospital room when we can get them to you or you can get them here. With all of that, let us then continue to prepare. Before I play the prelude, I would like to invite you to a concert this afternoon at 4 o'clock here in this very room. Meet the organ.
morning. We welcome you to Chester Presbyterian Church. We're glad you're here in person and virtually. Let us call ourselves to worship. Please stand if you are able. God created all things, visible and invisible, none other. God provides food for your stomach and spirit, none other. God is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. Let us worship the Trinity, none other. You may be seated. Atheists are not the only foolish people who act as if there is no God. Even in the midst of the miracle of life, we often do not acknowledge God's presence. And yet, the Spirit is with us as the source of life. Therefore, let us confess our sins and receive Christ's mercy. God of wonder, Lord of King David and the Son, the Messiah, David's greatest son, we confess our sins and pray for your help so that you can truly repent and turn from evil. Deliver us from the temptation to hide from you, to lie in you, because of the harm we have done to others. Forgive us for the curse we have brought upon the earth. Restore your creation in full health and feed the multitude from the abundance of your merciful power. Grow in us desire to love Christ with the fullness of your love and to glorify him along with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Let us continue in silent devotion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. The river of God's mercy runs deeper and wider than our sin. God removes our sin as far as the heavens are above the earth. Beloved in the risen Christ, we are forgiven. Amen.
Let's take a moment for the young in our midst and the young in our hearts. We start by saying good morning and bet you know what this is, right? It's a football. And I bet most of you realize that later today there's a, a game that's supposed to be a, a pretty big deal, right? Folks are going to gather with friends and family and, and all sorts of other folks. They're going to watch the game. They're going to laugh at the commercials. They're going to talk about the halftime show before and after. And, and most of all, what are they going to do? They're going to eat. They're going to eat a lot of food. Maybe you and your friends are going to have a, a family or friends Super Bowl party as well. But you know, there's another Super Bowl this day. And I think it's one that's more important than the football game. Yeah, that's right. The, the Super Bowl of caring. We've been talking about it. We've seen the stuff outside in the narthex. And if you brought food or funds for our pantry, you can put them in the soup pot in the narthex on your way home. But think about it. If we all put in just, just one dollar, imagine how we can all play in the Super Bowl to help alleviate hunger in our community. Another way that we care for the folks in our midst that are hungry is the garden on the corner that we're getting ready to plant in just a few weeks. Now, the garden is going to grow vegetables and herbs to add fresh food to people's diets. Some people think that I'm wearing my green stole because it's an ordinary Sunday, which is what you do. I'm really wearing it because it reminds me to eat my vegetables. There are a lot of folks who have a hard time eating good food so the garden on the corner will help. And we can reflect on their struggle by sharing some of the good soup that our volunteers made for us to take home today. Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, we are thankful to be able to participate in the Super Bowl of Caring. We ask that you bless people everywhere who are hungry and help us to help them. Help us remember Jesus' words. I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. Thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. Whenever you did this for one of the least of these followers of mine, you did it for me. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, may this your word give us the power to comprehend with all the saints the length and width, the height and depth of the love of Christ and the fullness of life to you. Amen. At the Passover Seder, the youngest at the table uh, recites four questions. The first of that questions ask Manish Tanoer, why is this night different than all other nights? On all the nights, in all the days, we can eat leavened and unleavened bread, but tonight we can eat only leavened bread. The answer to that question is found in our scripture today, Exodus 13, verses 3 to 10. It tells of Moses establishing the festival of unleavened bread. Hear the word of the Lord. Moses said to the people, remember this day on which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, because the Lord brought you out from there by strength of his hand. No leavened bread shall be eaten. Today is the month of Abed. You are going out. When the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, 
the Hittites, the Amorites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, which he swore to your ancestors to give you a land running with milk and honey. You shall keep his, this observation in this month. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day there shall be a festival to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten for seven days. No leavened bread shall be seen in your possession, and no leaven shall be seen among you in all your territory. You should tell your child on that day, it is because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. It shall serve for you as a sign on your head and, on, and a reminder on your forehead, so that the teachings of the Lord may be on your lips, for with strong hand the Lord brought you out of Egypt. You shall keep this ordinance at its proper time from year to year. second reading this morning comes from John's gospel reading in the sixth chapter verses 1 through 15 again listen to the word of our Lord after Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee also called the Sea of Tiberias a large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When Jesus looked up and saw the large crowd coming toward him, 
He said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. The word of the Lord. And once more, let us be united in prayer. Gracious, loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts find acceptance in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer, our rock and our refuge. Amen. Well, our Grace Cafe ministry has a cousin. Has a cousin in Minnesota, no less. Jim Dorn would be thrilled. In 2007, Larry Johnson, a retired Lutheran pastor, moved with his wife from the Twin Cities up to Pine County, a small rural community some miles from the city. And in Pine County, there are a lot of households that struggle with food insecurity. More than half the students in the school qualify for free and reduced lunches. And Grace Lutheran in Sandstone, the church where Larry and his wife joined, like CPC, ministers to this need in the school community by participating in a community-wide backpack ministry. Now, packing those bags over time led Larry to an idea. In 2018, after much prayer and thought, he, he told his pastor that he wanted to start a community meal. Now, reaching out to the community for like-minded people, Larry eventually had a board with community support and participants. And in 2019, everyone's table was launched on a -a once-a-month basis. Now, everyone in the community is welcome to come and dine But the focus is on those who lack the resources to enjoy a good dinner out at a restaurant. But their aim doesn't stop with feeding the people. They also want to give them an experience they often do not get to enjoy. So volunteers welcome each guest individually. Others minister as servers, helping guests review the menu, check for dietary needs, and bring drinks to the table as they're seated. They'll even sit at the table during the meal to facilitate conversation. Now, of course, like we know at Grace Cafe, others work in the kitchen preparing a delicious meal that's served to them at their table. Still others minister on the cleanup crew, And like Grace Cafe, the numbers at each meal range from about 50 to 90. They always prepare for 100 on a budget of 300. It'd make you proud, Cliff. Brad, too. Leftovers go home with guests or they're delivered to a shelter. 
Now, besides the once a month frequency, there's another difference from our Grace Cafe. Each meal has a theme. Handouts with quotes, a short education piece, and some jokes are prepared by Larry Johnson, who noted the handouts encourage people to have a more positive approach, to make the world a better place to live. For example, since February was Black History Month, that handout focused on race relations. When one of our meals focused on cuisine from India, we focused on different cultures and religions. In April, with Earth Day, we focused on the environment. The effort is to get people talking and sharing as they dine. Another example, in August 2019, the meal fell on August 6th, National Night Out. They got the city of Sandstone to provide space in a municipal park, and the meal was served outdoors. And since the date, August 6th, is also the anniversary of the Hiroshima bombing, everyone's table featured a handout about a survivor who lived locally and original paper cranes made in origami by a volunteer. The community-wide effort that's everyone's table was hit by the pandemic just like our own Grace Cafe and just like our own cafe. They went to a takeout model for over a year. Eventually, when it was deemed safe, the city opened the doors to the community center, which allowed for more space for the meal. Larry Johnson and his pastor, whose chef husband headed the meal teams, have moved from the community. But everyone's table continues with a dedicated board and wide community support. Central to forming community in the human experience is dining together, sharing a meal. Everyone's table board member, psychologist Joan Blumendahl Gruitt, notes that her work on the board has reinforced over and over the importance of building community through meal sharing as important human connections are made. There's something about eating together that binds the community and offers space to share stories from our lives and our histories. In a time when some consider building walls between people and nations, we in the faith community can offer a counter-narrative that moves people to build tables for meal sharing rather than dividing walls. There's a great story from Grace Cafe. It's one of my favorite, and some of you may already know it, but, but in one of the very first Grace Cafes several years ago, a group of folks who had never met found themselves at the same table back in the back towards the door. They enjoyed the meal, they enjoyed sitting together, they enjoyed talking and meeting each other. And until we went to our takeout model every Tuesday night, those same folks got back together at that same table to share their Tuesday night meal. In fact, if one wasn't there, they, like any good community, would follow up to find out how that person was. Our texts today point to the saving grace of meal sharing. It was so wonderful to have David start us off with the Exodus story because it's what he quoted from the Passover Haggadah, which describes for our Jewish brothers and sisters the order and the foods used in the Seder each year. And the Haggadah has been passed down from the Feast of the Unleavened Bread that was outlined in Exodus. In other words, 
It's a 3,500-year-old meal tradition, building community in the liberation event of that final dreadful plague. Consider as well, fully a third of Jesus' ministry was spent at table, sharing meals, getting to know people, sharing stories, and perchance swapping jokes. Today's meal story, John's version of the feeding of the 5,000, is Jesus' only miracle told in all four Gospels. But John is the only one to set it within the Passover tradition. Imagine that setting. As Jesus works with the young boy to take his foundation of fish and bread lunch to create a meal for all, the people make themselves to home. And at that very first church picnic, they settle in the grassy patch, maybe a bare bit of ground that was there. They can't help but chatter a bit with those seated nearby. Perhaps they spy someone from their village, or maybe they're close enough to a stranger that they start up a conversation. They talk about Jesus and his works. That turns to shared stories about the kids, the ailing mother-in-law, the bullying from the soldiers, the weather. And over a bit of fish and bread, through the grace of Christ, new community is found. Who knows? The thing is, eating and talking is important. Of course, for the moms in the crowd, not while your mouth is full. But yet, in between bites, taking a few moments, that God-given opportunity to grow beyond ourselves. For when we share at table with others, particularly outside our own family, we expand our world by listening to others, people who differ from us politically, racially, religiously. Think about all the boundaries that Jesus crossed. To follow him, we must be open to sharing meals with those who differ for us. For in that, we will grow in faith and in community. Larry Johnson Reflecting on what he started with everyone's table noted, it's really all about getting to gather around the dinner table again. Getting people to know one another and to talk to each other. I've been inspired and taken to heart Jesus' words. After a long day of speaking to a large crowd of people, the disciples told Jesus the people needed to go home so they could get something to eat. And Jesus said, how much would it cost for us to feed them? Everyone's table is about working together and sharing what we have with others. Thanks be to God.
Let us turn our hearts to the Lord in prayer, noting all those names on our prayer list as well as those that are on each of our hearts. Let us pray. God of abundance, you open your hand and feed us in due season, satisfying the desires of every living thing. You are just in all your ways and kind in all your doings. We pray for the family of nations, the families in our communities, and our own families, that they may have all they need to live in peace and harmony. You are just in all your ways and kind in all your doings. We pray for all churches, denominations, and faith communities, that we may find ways of cooperating to care for the earth and care for those in need while giving you the glory in all that we do. You are just in all your ways and kind in all your doings. God, you are near to all who call out to you. Use us as you use the boy with two fish and five barley loaves to answer the cries of the hungry. You are just in all your ways and kind in all your doings. We pray for the victims of war and violence, for orphans, mothers, and men who must live on the streets, and for all those who are seen as the fragments of society. May they be gathered up so that no one is lost. You are just in all your ways and kind in all your doings. We pray for the sick and those facing the end of their days. May Christ dwell in their hearts through faith, and may they know that they are rooted and grounded in love. You are just in all your ways and kind in all your doings. When we would make you a king, forgive us. When we are caught up in the storms of life, come to us. Calm our fears and help us reach our destinations. Now, through the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the love of Christ, to you be the glory in the church for all generations as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you to all who have shared contributions generously with us on the way in, brought your tithe or will do so on the way out. Thank you as well for all who have sent them in online and for those who have added a bit extra this day in the name of the Super Bowl of Caring. All of your generosity truly is a gift for God to you.
Let us pray. Loving God, we absorb your goodness in the food we eat, in the beauty our eyes receive, in the fellowship of family and community, and in the unconditional love you shower upon us. May we take these gifts and become mirrors of such fullness through words of praise, and as you've instructed, by loving our neighbors and working for justice in the land. Amen. things I'll need for later in the day. But don't forget, as John mentioned, the concert at 4 o'clock. It should be a wonderful time to come and enjoy some wonderful music. And John and Warren have worked up a whole lot of good information about the organ, which you'll find out about. But as you go forth, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon each and every one of you grant you his peace, his shalom.